Good evening, everyone. This is Ajay Gupta, Executive Director of KGD, a Katera Design Partner. I'm uh, thrilled and excited to be in this platform with the uh, esteemed panelists. Uh, uh, this forum, I think everybody knows what this forum is, it's called a Bold Talks, and we'll try to keep the talks bold only. So hopefully it'll be a little more controversial than you all expect. And it's not going to be, the topic says workspaces of future, and I think we're going to deconstruct that topic a little bit as we move forward in this conversation. Uh, I'm delighted to introduce our panelists. I'm humbled and delighted to introduce our panelists, actually. They don't need introduction, but as a formality, I'll do that. Uh, Yatin Shah here, Mr. Yatin Shah. Oh, Yatin Patel, sorry, Yatin. I killed you, man. Sorry about that. But Yatin, Mr. Yatin Patel. You said you're going to be bold, right? So. <laughs> sorry. No, 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 no. I also know another gentleman called Yatin Shah. I apologize for that. But as long as you keep it. As long as you're keeping him Gujarati, it's, it doesn't matter. So it's within the community, right? <laughs> no, I think everybody knows Yatin Patel. I know him or know of him more than know him uh, for last uh, 20, 25 years. He's actually a founder and principal of DSP Architects. And actually, he conceived the firm and he's been running successfully for the last 30 years. He's built it enough to be in India, in Southeast Asia, to Australia, and some, some trickle effect in US also in Canada. So I think his business practice on multiple verticals, including commercial, uh, residential, uh, other verticals beyond that, I would not want to comment about that. But he's built a large practice and he's one of the most successful architects we have actually seen in our times. And so he's with us. I'm humbled to be in the same platform and trying to trying to moderate this small discussion we're going to have. Welcome, Yatin. Sorry, I took your last name wrong. I apologize for that once again. So welcome to the forum, and then we'll take it from there. And introduce Devin. Devin Oza is actually an architect by degree, but he chose to jump the ship. He's the smart one out here. I think for the last 25 years, he's been running into the project management side and on the you know EPC contracting side. He's uh, executive director for Knight Frank. I think most of us who are from the fraternity know of him, or if don't know him. And and be, before that, I think within the Knight Frank and before his time, I think he's managed to do a close to 30 million square feet of multiple verticals, including residential, healthcare, actually uh, retail, F and D all together. Uh, that's a huge ch chunk of real estate he's managed to actually complete. Before that, he was in DTZ and he was the brainchild for the EPC and PMC side of uh, DTZ. Uh, and that was his brainchild when he did that. So we sit with you, Devin, welcome here. I apologize again, uh, Jatin. I'm very, very, I think I'm very upset that I took your name wrong. Sorry about that. Welcome on the forum. I will not try to be moderator as we discussed. I'm going to just open the conversation and then we will have a candid discussion on a cup of tea. If you have a cup of tea or a glass of water, we'll take it from there. So to set up the platform, right, uh, you know, the, the topic wants to be workspaces of future. Uh, and I, I actually truly believe, and I think uh, to predict future is immature right now. Uh, it's not, not right to predict future as we speak, but to contemplate the current dynamic situation and what we live through it is probably the right approach. Uh, future is based on a projection which is made from a preconceived parameters, and we have lost all the preconceived parameters in the last five, six months. Um, so the whole idea would be to probably share your knowledge, share your experiences, share your feelings what has happened probably from last five six months with you professionally personally client wise st stakeholders wise and that's what the start of the conference should be uh, and if we are lucky we will have two three comments come in from the audience we will dwell on that and, and probably have a conversation around that and hopefully end with no conclusion but hopefully all of us when we walk out of here would probably have a new question in the head a new direction which think they, they need to dwell on so we will walk out with more questions than answers but that's probably the right way of doing uh, this forum right now so i'll open the forum said that yet i'll start with you uh all yours thank thanks ajay and uh, <clears throat> no worries on the name uh <laughs> <laughs> but 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 like i said uh, it's a, it's going to be a bold conversation so that was a good start uh,
and also technology to map uh, user patterns, behavior patterns, and you know, uh, visual studies were conducted to actually see that you know if there were thousand employees, what what is the kind of space that you really need to provide for? And and they, you know their ask was shifting into the new office. Just off the cuff, they said, oh, we'll need 1,300 people to be seated there at any given point of time. And then through the studies and all of the studies that we did through technology also, we proved to them that, you know, only about 700 people were really required to be seated in, in their office because people were either traveling, absent and stuff like that. So we we done all the design and planned the entire office out and uh, used limited technology in, in, in that, but uh, we had used technology to map what the true requirements were. During the pandemic, things obviously have changed. And, you know, again, a lot has been spoken about uh, working from home. We are all working from home. Uh, the, the organization is a... Uh, software firm, uh, so they've said that about 60% of the people are going to work from home. And as a policy, that's what they're going to do. Uh, we said, okay, so do, do you really require that kind of space then now, given that you're, you're going to only have 40% uh, occupying the space? Uh, we, we kind of had lots of workshops on that topic and then we decided let's first check uh, with the users. I mean, we had various stakeholders. We have close to about seven different groups of people that have been working out of there. And they said, let's analyze what they would do if you say work from home, uh, but you still would come to the office at some point of time. What would you do if you came back to the office? And, uh, you know, that's when we said, let's try and map if someone came to the office, what is the need of the office? First of all, is there a need of, for the office? We said 40% will come to the office to do what? They would do eye, eye working or they would do collaborative working or what? Or socialize or what, what would they do? So interestingly, uh, most of the people said that we will only come to the office to collaborate. And we broke that down into saying, okay, fine, you're going to come there only to collaborate, but if you're going to be working from home, you come to the office only to collaborate, you're not collaborating the whole day. So you only need that V space for certain amount of time, and then you still need an I space unless you're going to travel back and forth. And with the demographics and the logistics of transport and public transport in whichever city that one is, uh, it's difficult. So one would tend to spend most of the time within the office if somebody is gone to the office. Even say, if you're collaborating for a couple of hours, the rest of the five or six hours, you still need a workspace. So. We kind of mapped all of that. We uh, understood those requirements from a user pattern as to what they would really do. And um, then came up with a revised brief and then starting to, started to go about doing our design. Of course, in doing that, we've also realized that there is going to be a lot of technology involved in the new office. And right you know to because everyone will need a safe hygienic and you know office uh, and the safety would be of utmost uh, priority uh, hygiene and safety both uh, and and also the wellness now has uh, become extremely important uh, from a employee perspective so to provide all of that a large amount of technology will will start getting integrated into interior design. So, you know, a couple of years back, we also tied up with a firm called IB, it's called Intelligent Buildings, where we started, we've started to provide smart building technologies as an integrated service alongside with uh, interior design. So, uh, the pandemic has actually been a catalyst for, for that and actually technology being used in 
uh, the, the, the space that we are in now. So a uh, lot of things right from uh, entry levels or contactless entries, uh, the whole experiential value of uh, uh, the arrival, right from you entering uh, the campus, from your car, getting into your parking lot, to being uh, taken to the closest vertical transportation, going up to through voice acted elevators, to entering the office without really uh, any contact. And right from there, right up to getting to a desk, which again is unassigned, which could be booked because of the work from home situation. All, all Most of the work desks would become free address. So one could book uh, their office spaces or their seats and then come into the office. So several things like that, just that's one, one example. Uh, and the other that we were doing earlier also was uh, meeting room bookings. But that concept now uh, will get into also uh, cafeteria bookings. So to reduce the load on cafeteria. So let's say you have 1,000 people, you design a cafeteria for assuming 200 or 250 or 300 people. You, in the current state, you would want to avoid crowding there, right? So how do you reduce that? So like we did uh, meeting room bookings, there would be cafeteria space bookings or a table booking, quite like a restaurant. Uh, food would be ordered online through an app. So a lot of apps would start being developed, apps for lighting control, uh, you know, human-centric lighting for uh, ordering food and a lot of other services. So I think technology, by and large, is going to be a very big, uh, will play a very big role in the newer offices. And, okay. you know, I can keep going on on this, but I'm going to leave it <laughs> to... <laughs> no, I, think, I think what we need, I think that's what actually you said is so right. We have experiences similar to that, but I think It'll be interesting to hear Devin from his your perspective how construction has. But sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Ajay. But uh, what I was meant to try and uh, communicate here is that whilst we said that we cannot predict the future, mm -hmm. the way we've gone about it is we've kind of told the clients, "This is your brief." So you're not going to come back to us and say, "Hey, you predicted the, this as a future," and we're kind of going in together and trying to analyze what they will come there to do and, and put it together and you not know, not look to a uh, you know, crystal ball and say, this is what's going to happen and then this is what you need. No, no, but I think truly before Devin starts, truly what has happened here is we have changed our muscle memory as actually employees also, right? As employees, we have adapted technology very fast because yep. the pandemic hit us. So when the human changes fast, the actually the design, the infrastructure will change around it anyhow. Mm -hmm. So I think we as customers, if I was an employee of a large IT firm or anybody, I have adapted to live with these technological changes because of the pandemic. The technology always existed. We just didn't adapt it as fast. Now I think the need of the hour is we have all started adapting it. And actually that's going to be the change. The people will change it rather than the designers and the operators. or the. I think the people will also help change the whole idea. That's my true sense to it. But from your perspective, Devin, I think your space is a very tricky space in the last six months. So it'll be interesting. We still can sketch on a piece of paper. I don't know how are we operating. What's what's your two cents to that? See, uh, as Yatin said, we, we were pushed to this uncertain uh, situation. And, uh, uh, you know, prior to this lockdown or this COVID-19, I never imagined that the project management business can survive uh, by doing work from home. So it's a it's a, one of the gr biggest and greatest experiments with this work. It was forced on us, but it somehow worked and uh, nothing stopped. Uh, even we continued, uh, you know, working. Uh, but yes, I think the, the lessons we've learned from uh, this COVID-19 or lockdown, definitely people can work from home 
on a mass scale. There was improvement in productivity. Uh, now, it can be debated because there were no distractions. You can't leave your home. So obviously, you, you have no choice but to work. Uh, and then work-life balance. Uh, I think suddenly uh, families realized that you know we have somebody who we either saw early in the morning or late in the evening, and he's there whole full time. So I think that you know for some time created a relief, a sense of relief that you know you're part of a larger family. But you know, a couple of months down the line, they felt yes. that you know it's it's too much. Now, coming to the project management or the construction uh, field, like unlike you know uh, businesses which are IT enabled or focus mainly on IT, but they can you know sit at home or in a cafe and work, the project managers can't operate uh, you know sitting at home. You know it was a challenge for me to keep my team motivated where they while they were sitting at home. Every day I would use to conduct uh, a training program, but there has to be end to it because it became too much for them. So the moment the lockdown eased, uh, the first thing was, you know, how to get back to the site. And we created some uh, uh, standard operating procedures, what to do. And this was purely based on whatever the limited information we either had from, from the media or from other uh, countries where the lockdown had eased out before we, we did that. Uh, and I think the first challenge was to take that first step out of home. You know, even for me, the first day was like I was going for a war, like, you know, all the uh, sanitizers, face masks, and all kind of equipment, food, water, everything I was carrying with me. And and still we continue doing that. Uh, but just uh, before this uh, discussion started, I, I, I did mention a, a phrase, uh, which I don't want to repeat here, but yes, I think we've slowly, we've started to, you know, uh, adapt to the situation. We We can't avoid this we have to live with this for longer time so what to do we we have to resume our sites we have to ensure that there are protocols which are maintained people are sanitized if there is a case that the, the site would be shut down all those precautions because you know unlike offices where you you're working in a controlled environment every one hour two hours your housekeeping guys would come and clean it Sites are very different. You are exposed to uh, larger risks. And then you have clients who are not sure what they would do or they want to do with, with the, the offices they are going to build. So we came into a situation where we were advising clients. The first, was, the first step was reoccupancy of the offices. If you are going to occupy your existing office, how you should do that. So we came up with a plan. Uh, stage two was, you know, what modifications you want to do, create touchless surfaces, you know, and it actually triggered, I think this whole uh, pandemic triggered the use of technology. As Yatin said, technology was always there, but it's it was not accepted the way it's now being accepted. We always spoke about, you know, fresh air, the air changes, you know, but somehow it was always considered as, you know, it can be avoided. I think now because of health and hygiene, because of wellness, it's taken a, a front seat. Again, we don't know what's going to happen after the vaccination is out. Would we go back to the previous normal or would be a new normal? Nobody knows that. And there was a term which was used in, uh, in a, one of the conferences I attended was death of an office. So, you know, we are social animals. We need offices. We, I, totally I, think, I think it would be, uh, the offices would not be uh, something which would be, uh, you know, a professional, uh, you know, obligation. It would be a personal choice. People would, you know, 
actually choose whether they want to go to office on a certain day or not. Uh, and also, I think uh, we we were discussing about the challenges in Mumbai, why Mumbai hasn't opened up because of the, the dependencies on, on public transportation. Yes, uh, the, those constraints would remain there. So what is the solution? Maybe there is a solution that we, we create satellite offices, which are, you know, walkable distances from your home. Uh, we are talking to offices, which is, uh, there's a term called WC2H, work closer to home. So <laughs> you see that, you know, emergence of such ideas. Again, I'm saying that these are only, you know, uh, maybe a short term solutions. We don't know what the long term solutions would be. But, but the, with each day, each week, we're learning something new and we're adapting something new. I think, Devin, what you said is so right. I'm just going to take the positives from both your conversation also, and I'm going to echo what Yathan said. You know, this is what COVID has given us. We should be always be decentralized, right? We have actually set up like a campus where everybody travels 30 kilometers to come to a campus to work, which is a waste of everything, right? I don't want to list what is all waste of time, fuel, energy, whatever. If you can de start decentralizing and looking at that opportunity, it's actually going to help us. This whole situation will help us in the future, I think so. Yeah, I think just to add to what you had said, we had done an office space two years ago, which was pre-COVID, but the chairman had a vision that it should be, I told you before also a little bit, the chairman had a vision that I want to have ceiling fans. We are in Bangalore, we don't need air conditioners all the time. I want to open my windows. I don't want lobbies to be air conditioned. I want my toilets to not have doors, have natural ventilation. I want my floors to be scrubbable. I want my stairs to have natural air and light. All those wellness ideas he had, we implemented. And when COVID hit, his office is the best office to operate right now. His, you know, so it's basically, I think we're going back to the old school office space where facade of a building is not an intrusion from outside to inside. The facade is actually chosen or filtered elements from outside to inside. We need to have actually access to outside and inside together what we choose, especially where, we, where I stay in Bangalore. We can actually for 10 months, we don't need air conditioning in a way we live. But every office... You're lucky. I mean, we're like... Daily. I, I, Ask a daily. <laughs> I love that for that. I, and I, I say, why you live in Bangalore? Because weather is nice. Why you live in Bangalore? Because the climate is nice. Everything adjusts here because the weather is nice, right? And there's a board here called Solpa, just Mari. Everybody adjusts because it's not hot and humid, right? We all adjust to life here because of the weather here itself, I think. So I think there's some value for that. <laughs> yeah, but but Ajay, on, on the flip side, uh, you know, yes, you have all the you have good weather for 10 months, but you can't have naturally ventilated and it's going to be difficult to have naturally ventilated offices because uh, A, the weather is quick, uh, rapidly changing in Bangalore because of the amount of construction and the concrete that's being yeah. built and constructed there. Also, you you normally would have a, another building coming up, which is absolutely adjacent to, to your uh, office premises. And there's so much amount of dust. Uh, yeah. you know. I, totally think, I think in the, in the urban Bangalore environment, that's true. What we did was uh, probably his own campus for the client and that he created a mini forest there. So we created elements which we could deal with but rightly said, Bangalore is also shifting to a not a true you know, paradise for weather show. And even if it's not naturally ventilated, you know, the, the ideology was in the morning, we'll open the ceiling fans, open the windows, change the airflow one time in the morning. Like if you live in a condo or a house in Delhi, I was from Delhi, you would do that in the morning anyhow. You will open the whole windows for a couple of hours, let the, then you close, then you have air conditions on. But, you know, we forgot that to do that in our commercial buildings anyhow. So that was the premises that when the shift changes also, we'll open for half an hour, let the air blow through it. I think that is helping. And this was pre-COVID. So I think I will give all the kudos to the chairman because he didn't want a typical glass box, which we all are used to seeing good, bad. We have designed, all of us have designed. Uh, that's a different debate by itself. That should we do that or not? But it's going back to the, you know, the basics of architecture and interior design where you know, light should come from north, not from south. You know, the basics are coming back to live. The wellness factor, which I think Devin, you said, 
the wellness factor is going to become default as we move forward. I feel that's my feeling right now. We want to be well generally. Uh, there's another thing we did actually. People are forced to go to a rooftop to have coffee there because it says you are vitamin D deficient. Everybody, us, are vitamin D deficient because we're not exposed to sunlight, right? So that, that office forces employees to go have coffee in the sun. Again, Bangalore has the luxury to have, be in the sun and not feel so bad about it sometimes. Other cities don't. But, you know, those thoughts were, I think, progressive thoughts for that time. And now we're probably living them a little bit more because of this uh, current pandemic situation. I think it's, it's, it's very interesting. I personally feel... If I just gauge myself in my house as, a, as an individual, not as an architect or part of the construction industry, I started dealing with myself differently, right? I used my balcony first time in my house, my own bedroom balcony. I never used it because first of all, maybe I came, left in the morning, came at night and on the weekend I was out doing something, okay? So now I needed a, my own outdoorsy space. I started using my balcony again. So that's, I think, my, my progression as an individual, not as a designer, that I am actually getting more fresh air every morning. I have tea in my balcony, which was a change because of this. Again, it's a very slight or a small thing, but I think they're all changing, and, and our muscle memories will change in a few months, which probably as individuals will make us a little different and operate differently. I think that's my uh, you know, experiences as an individual. I'm more friendly to my neighbors. These are funny things, but you know, I'm, I'm, I know my neighbors more now, I hang, not physically hang, but I engage them much more than I used to engage them. I think these are positive signs of the whole pandemic, I would say. So I think uh, it will translate into something in the workplace also, in some sense. Uh, we are also talking about what is a decentralizing office space. We're talking about having co-working built into the communities. It's a hundred seater co-working within a four or five hundred com flat complex. So and then, then companies can choose to lease it for their employees who live there. That's not a bad idea right now because work from home, although sounds still glamorous, I'm sure uh, Yatin, uh, we, you, your team is working from home and my team is working from home, but I truly believe it's not right right now because we're forcing them to work from home because they were not preset to do that, right? My younger staff lives in a PG. It's a 10 by 8 room. He doesn't have too much data power all the time. I'm forcing him to work from home there. If there's no pandemic, he would not want to do that. Uh, he would want to be in a space which is, he gets coffee and tea, he's in air-conditioned space sitting some days, you know, and he's working and collaborating. So I think work from home for my business, I think, uh, and the younger staff we have, they don't, they're all not living in spaces where work from home is uh, the luxury, to be very frank. So I think they will, that will change a little bit as we move forward. That's my sense, because we are not set up. In, in urban environment, we are not set up to work from home, especially for the younger staff who was paying a, you know, 8,000, 10,000, 15,000 rent for a very small space. And uh, and they were not set up for that. So I think maybe we have to help them to do that. But uh, because of pandemic and everything, I think everybody's aligned to do that. In the true long term, two, three years, I'm not sure me as an organization is set up to do that also. I don't know what, Yatin, your comments are on that. How are you, how, how are your employees actually thinking on work from home concept, how does that work for you uh, as, as a owner of a large organization? So, uh, uh, like you rightly said, uh, you know, work from home as a, as a general uh, term for the in entire workforce, not just uh, my, my, uh, my, my office, but uh, by and large as a whole, as the entire country per se, uh, work from home has to be looked at from all aspects, you know, from the demographics to different uh, locations. Uh, every city has their own challenges. Uh, housing at, in different sit in the various cities have different uh, challenges on its own. So, like you rightly said, people live in small apartments. Uh, they could be 600 square feet, 800 square feet single bedroom, uh, two bedroom, and those normally would be, you know, uh, two people working it from from that apartment or, you know, four people living there or six people living in that apartment in that small space. Uh, one challenge would be the infrastructure that is to be provided, uh, you know, connectivity and, and uh, softwares and data privacy. That, that's one part of it. Uh, the other one is the physical space. 
<clears throat> and the ergonomics uh, that are there, if the, they are there, or most in most cases not available in, mm -hmm. in those homes. Uh, you know, also if uh, the husband and wife both are working, and, and normally in this case when you know uh, two people are working, you, you know, you would want privacy, right? If you're if you're working from home, you're on a Zoom call, uh, you need the privacy. So. You know, one bedroom apartment or a studio, that starts becoming difficult. Uh, you know, I I had an example of one of my friends tell me, uh, forget India, in in Australia, uh, a couple was living in a newly married couple were living in a one bedroom apartment. They've they've shifted, they've gone moved into a two bedroom apartment, newly married. Uh, you know, in COVID, you, you are not going to get visitors, so it's not like they're building a guest room. But they've shifted into a two-bedroom apartment because both of them have to work. Uh, they need their privacy, so they've got the two rooms to work out of. Uh, mm -hmm. well, that's a luxury that somebody could afford, but not many people can afford that, uh, especially in our country. It's going to be difficult. So work from home for sure. I mean, <clears throat> we are currently in a forced mode where you know we are unable to go to the office. Uh, because of uh, you know health reasons, poor infrastructure, uh, public transport, or you know more different modes of transport to getting to our offices. So we can say that we are currently only really being forced to do it right now. But most of these people would want to go back to the office. Now, when you go back to the office, the landscape of the office will change because people now have realized will have realized that I could do something which outside of the office or my eye space requirements could be different. And I may need to go to the office pro probably just to collaborate and socialize. So I may look at the office uh, and I'm just thinking aloud and this is the way I'm thinking. It could be like a club where you're going there you're socializing. I mean, when I say socializing, you're actually doing some productive work. You're collaborating. And then you have these small little spaces and, and thrown around as individual workspaces. But again, all unassigned workspaces. So the office will look, will should and would tend to look more like a club space. Uh, not in the true sense, a club or a nightclub of some sorts. Uh, but, uh, you know, more as, as an informal or a business lounge, more than the typical work space that we would see. But for sure, the work from home in our country, in the dense cities that we live in, or even the tier two ones, uh, work from home in, will not, uh, you know, go a long way. Yes, yeah. there will be a few, there will be a certain percentage of people that could and would choose to do that. But, uh, you know, like some people or some organization made uh, statements that we need only 20 percent of our people going to the office. We can manage. And all those statements are kind of not not, not really, uh, in my opinion, not really going to be working. I, I think so, too. I think David will add there. But I think so, too. There's also, you know, the, the pandemic has helped us work from home because we have nothing else to do. So we can work from home and we can control the deliverable. Because the guy is or the, the employee is not even walking out right now from the house. On the other sense, secondly, there's always there's a lot of cost cutting happening from the big organization, and, and work from home is probably helping right now to manage finances in the in the low times of also. I think a lot of people are reanalyzing the revenue models uh, of of like actually and saying, okay, I don't need to lease this space for at least six months. At least I will save some money there. But I don't think that's long lived. Again, also maybe the 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 and the, and the the landscape of the office space will change, but the office will remain as, as you said. That. I think so. I, I have a question for both of you. It's like there are two questions. One is in terms of uh, the large scale developments you are you are doing, like you, you're doing commercial spaces, you're doing residential spaces. Do you think this pandemic would force uh, you know uh, developers or builders? Uh, and even architects to go for mixed use development so that you 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 creating you know sub cities within a city you know people don't have to commute we've seen that the challenges in larger cities is a commute public transportation would become a challenge so 
do you see a rise in creating uh, mixed use development within the city uh, the second question is would you see a horizontal development being preferred to a vertical one because we we know the challenges there are you know limited number of lifts and with, with the social distancing you might have to you know you uh, use those lifts with minimum number of people for that so do you see these changes happening uh, or it's just uh, a myth yeah i think you can start and i'll add if you want <coughs> sure uh, in, in, uh, i i would think that the mixed use developments would uh, there would be a larger percentage of uh, developments which would be more mixed use uh, where where you have most of the things in close proximity uh, it also depends on the amount of space that one has to to do a mixed use development of a true sense you need a minimum size you know you can say on a 1 acre or 4 acre or 5 acre uh, you have a mixed use development but the, those will not work as a true mixed use development unless you've got a the the scale of the project so if you're talking about 25 acres or upwards of that then it really makes sense of uh, you know truly doing a small mini township like you point it uh, <clears throat> where you've got everything at hand's reach and you're not really having to travel because what we've all learned uh, in this pandemic is uh, we're saving a lot of time in traveling right to go to work and we're using that time to actually be more productive uh, it, uh, it boils down to becoming more productive because <clears throat> on an average uh, an employee probably traveled for 2 hours in a day to get to work and back home so those 2 hours you've got with yourself to yourself with your family so you, you know your uh, for your well being and you know work life balance so <clears throat> that would reduce so you'd have much more time and therefore making uh, employees more productive so mixed use development yes it would be again we we'll have to uh, see uh, how long this lasts which again nobody knows we don't know the ved but or virus that date right uh, and what is to, what is it going to be like right so in the last 10 years we we were witnessing a recurrence of you know these kind of pandemic you know uh, uh, viruses coming up not to this scale we had sars we had h1n1 we had ebola so we were getting warnings but we didn't take it very seriously now i think this because of the magnitude of this pandemic we suddenly got a wake up call i think devin i i'll add to what uh, yatin said the mixed use we are already practicing mixed use the problem with mixed use in the real estate mix is that the accommodation of the residence part of mixed use when is developed around an it campus it's not affordable for the 70% of the people who actually work in the it campus <laughs> it's, it's an, it, if 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 i have a 4 million of uh, multi tenant building which is occupied by mncs and so on and i have 1 bhk to 3 bhk condos flats around it those are not affordable by the 70% of people who are going to come work there actually that's the trouble this disorganized pg sector which is now changing into co living and all that that may have a positive impact we need compact small spaces for people to live in which are organized within the master planning or within the mixed use otherwise you have to find this sprawl spaces around where people start leasing spaces to live in and they are actually come work in these big campuses and 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 as as cost becomes uh our money become prohibitive they start going far from that campus anyhow the real estate works like that also the more you develop that whole space becomes more expensive so you know your 50000 salary gentleman cannot pay 25000 rupees rent right i mean even if it's a small unit so he starts moving away it, it has to work with the numbers game also in master planning and actually mixed use is the right approach we have we have done it enough now but you realize all mixed use are driven for managerials and above it's not driven for the actual workforce which actually continue we runs the organization right i mean yeah that, that's true and then uh, ajay that that really defeats the purpose of you know having the larger workforce which really is uh, using public transport uh, you're actually shifting them out of that space and uh, you're getting only a certain genre of people to be you know in close proximity to that so again you 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 and and as uh, any developer would do or an even an architect would address this sort of a uh, 
a project that would have been thrown at you, at you and you know you're working on it you'd like to maximize the value that yes. the developer would get yes. right yes. so yes. so so you would you know want to uplift or upgrade the level of uh, real estate that you're creating so again it tends to become more expensive and unaffordable yes. again you have to look at uh, you know the location so city to city it will vary uh, yes. scales in uh, of plots that are available in mumbai for example will be exorbitant to do a to a mixed use development in the true sense right cool. uh, as compared to uh, even for that matter even bangalore or even Bangalore. say pune uh, or or outskirts of pune you know or, or newer areas which are developing so uh, you will really do have to look at the the locality the location uh, all of those things and coming back to your second question about uh whether they would be horizontal or vertical developments again the same thing would apply uh you know same two issues what is the ved or virus end date we don't know so how long is social distancing going to be a uh, norm so to speak uh when we are talking about these newer developments <clears throat> most developers are saying okay i'm doing a 3 million 4 million square feet development i'm going ahead with it in the current state is going to be ready in 2 and a half 3 years what's going to be the scenario then i don't know but i am placing my bets on what we used to what we were used to working and i'm going ahead and doing a vertical development also uh, as a you know as municipal policies or local policies that are set for buildings uh there are no developers going to say if i have a plot i'm going to only do a horizontal development and not exploit the uh, the entire fsi available for that and in most cases i would have to go taller to to meet that uh, real requirement take the example of hyderabad there is no fsi you you build you build whatever yeah, yeah. you build whatever you can build <laughs> so, which who who is going to say let's go horizontal right it, i mean it it the the true value of the uh, plot would not be met and can you imagine what that space would cost for any tenant to take up if you divide you know what it could have been built as so again uh, you know from location to location like say for example in mumbai if, imagine saying in mumbai in worli i've got this plot <laughs> let's go horizontal <laughs> i agree but i also want to add i think this uh, we are not going to be uh, ever i feel this is my opinion like a covid ready constantly right i mean i think we will get away from it and become as because i think as humans we are going to interact we going to mingle but certain things will come out positive out of it which means maybe we will we'll travel less to work right i mean if these are the good our 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 civic, our civic sense will improve as indians right i mean as we will actually have some civic sense some technology which i think ethan mentioned will be default so we start actually distancing ourselves anyhow where we don't need to mingle right organized distancing right i have to go to my lunch at 130 why do i go before because i'm i have a slotted time at 130 for my lunch in my cafeteria so your your the planned way of uh, actually data processing will help people not to mingle and actually clutter and uh, those things actually will be the positive signs of this in my field because we clutter because we don't know everybody reaches for lunch oh it's too busy then i'm just using lunch as an example but it's truly everywhere i think the the data processing of will become so high that we will actually organize ourselves around the the applications and then technology be all around and as muscle memory we will hopefully upgrade our civic sense <laughs> and also, also to add that you know uh, operationally <clears throat> we will figure a way out of uh, de-densifying all of these spaces so like we said for the cafeteria we will de-densify that we'll stagger the timings to have even longer timings longer. we would de-densify the entry and exit in and out of the office so you know we said work from home there will be flexible hours so in a commercial building where you see between 8:30 or 9:00 to 10:00 o'clock 
all the elevator banks are absolutely packed and you know everyone's rounding for uh, to take the elevator up uh, you would have staggered timings uh, you know that so we've come up with all of, all of these uh, newer ways and solutions around these things so uh, uh, you know primarily the economics of it will will drive all these uh, issues of vertical versus horizontal developments and <clears throat> But you know there are three, 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 three spaces in a workplace which are which are managed for security reasons before. Now will be managed for more other things, which is probably access control. Right? Access control is what I think Yatin said. The, the it's only not for who's entering, but who is entering when and how are we densifying the access. So access control will be one. Any public spaces in a workspace which is cafeteria or a, will be managed or a collapse space or maybe a town hall will be managed uh, digitally. I think so. Toilets, I know we are in co colder conversation. The toilets will be actually a, a place where we all gather and and and, and actually can be the uh, root cause of infection, if anything. That will be better managed from a contact uh, like approach to that also. That will, these are the spaces where people mingle for no reason will get managed, I think, more actually through technology or through presence. And do you see a future of office design uh, being like very similar to how you design the healthcare facilities, like antimicrobial services. And you know, <laughs> you, you mentioned about you, your uh, you know, MD wanted a, a, a floor which can be mopped, all those things. So do you see that trend coming in office design? If, if you don't mind, Yatin, I will try to say a few th words on it and then you can add. We are very active as a healthcare architect as KGD, right? So we do actually at least 20, 25 hospitals on an annual basis. And we do workplaces. This is the first time we are actually mingling these two studios. This is the first time we are actually mingling specs of a healthcare to to an office space. In in healthcare, there were always a, was a flow philosophy, right? This is the dirty corridor. This is the clean corridor in an OT suite. Let's examine the whole ideology of that. Forget this is a HEPA filter. This is 100% return. This is not 100% return. This is negative pressure. This is positive pressure, right? There's a reason for all this yeah. madness now has started applying in active workplaces. Not to that extensive level, but the ideologies have been started applying to workplaces constantly right now. You know, why do we need, if I have a lobby space and a waiting space in the workspace, why does that air condition needs to mingle with the workspace behind? It should be standalone age, right? So if I sit, so segregation, zoning, negative pressure, positive pressure, all that dirty corridor, clean corridor concept from healthcare and finish it. I'm not going to the material specs of that. All are translating a little bit in the workplace environment, which is a good practice anyhow. I don't think that's bad to do anyhow. I mean, if we didn't have COVID also, I think there's no harm practicing like that. Sorry about that. Like anyhow. So I think we are facing that. We are actually mingling the both studios to, to come up with some solutions. Right now. So yeah, I think, uh, I think you think have... Well, I think and, uh, and, and, and uh, just digressing from that and taking a cue out to that, uh, I think all of us as uh, organizations, uh, because of the situation, we are, we are going to have to adapt. We have to have to go, going to be agile and see how uh, our profession takes us and how we uh, adapt to the situation, ever changing and fast changing uh, situation. And, you know, like how you mentioned that you have combined all your studios. We we've integrated technology into it, and you know. We'll, we'll all have to adapt. Uh, you know, it, that will be the need of the hour. That is the need of the hour anyway. So uh, let, let, let alone what the clients think of us, but we'll have to come up with uh, uh, newer, innovative solutions uh, and offerings to our clients. I think I've been poked now a couple of times that we need to wrap it up in the next 10 minutes. So what we'll do is there are a couple of questions which we can throw at all of us, which I've, been, I've got, and maybe we can react to that if you don't mind. So there are two questions I'll take. Uh, I'll just read the two questions uh, right away. One is, does the nature of architecture or consulting profession also change because of this? And that's an interesting question, park that thought for a minute. And one question for uh, Devin, you uh, directly. Do you foresee emergence, emergence of new segment in exponential numbers such as data centers, and they will be the new opportunity areas in workplaces? So these are two questions I think are worth discussing. I know there are more questions. I apologize to the viewers who will not be answered because I think these two questions have enough depth to discuss for five, 10 minutes. And then we'll probably say thank you to each other and move forward. Uh, if you want to take that, Devin, you can take that uh, data center question and maybe Yatin, after that, you can take on the how architecture and consulting profession is changing. Is that? Sure. Right? Sure, sure. 
So, uh, you know, there are two segments which are actually expanding in this pandemic. Uh, data center, of course, because uh, of the reasons you, you know, this whole, uh, every company is looking at uh, having uh, a larger data uh, storage facilities. So, yes, data centers are expanding, uh, and there are a lot of international players who are coming to India, apart from you have Indian players as well. The other uh, sector which is growing is logistics and warehousing. Uh, you know, with e-commerce, the life in the last six months, we're all dependent on, on ordering online groceries. Everything is online. So, you know, you see the uh, warehousing coming up and smaller distribution centers within the cities. You know, unused malls, unused uh, cinema halls are being converted into distribution centers. So, yes, uh, you know, as said, every, uh, uh, you know, uh, adversity would be an opportunity for something. Uh, so it is uh, it's something which we're seeing booming. And I think in the next uh, five years, at least, we'll see a lot of growth in these two sectors. Uh -huh. I, I truly agree. I think we are also seeing that some activity there. So I think the, the actual key question here, will our practice change as architects and consulting moving forward? What is happening? That's oh, it, has it, it has changed already. I mean, it's <laughs> not just uh, it's not just architects uh, consulting uh, work that has changed. Uh, it's it's the whole world has changed. Uh, everyone, every every field there has been a change. So we're 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 no exception. Uh, but, but in specific, in in our case, uh, which also is uh, a generalized thing that we all will have to adopt to adapt to technology. And working from home has told us that you know, we will have to do it this way. We were lucky enough to have gone that route earlier, which is why we have been uh, successful in being productive. Uh, and, and, and you know, uh, more and more uh, uh, companies would have to go that route to stay in business. We will also uh, have to look at different avenues be agile and nimble uh, to adapt to newer sectors of work, uh, like they've been mentioned about data centers and logistics. Uh, we, we'll have to get uh, focus and to see how we can service those industries. Of course, not losing out on uh, our core capabilities, uh, like we did a couple of years back uh, on uh, integrating technology into our offerings uh, with the workspace and, and all the architecture that we do, that in, in itself, uh, you know, has given us reason enough to believe, and this pandemic has given us reason enough to believe that the decision we took two years back was in the right direction. Of course, we had never imagined uh, for something like this to have happened, but uh, this just is a catalyst now to all of that, and we are seeing more and more people uh, coming to us uh, for this offering. So I, I guess we'll, we'll still have to be uh, adaptive to all of these changes uh, across and, and, and see how we, we take it from there. No, I think, I think yeah, just to add to that on a positive note, uh, we'll work from home and uh, using technology to collaborate. That's been the, the need of the hour. The, the positive I feel for our business is been that the clients, you know, our, our clients are very demanding clients that they want to touch and feel meeting constantly. So I think I've been able to save time, but not flying for a two hour meeting to Mumbai or the other way around, or you know, sitting in an office just for a half an hour meeting. Sometimes you spend a day and just traveling all that. So clients are more adaptive to use technology to actually have a meeting. I think clients, our stakeholders are moving into that direction also where I think as a productivity has gone up because of that, we don't need to travel to a, to a, to a different city or a different zone just for a half an hour meeting because usually in our field architecture interior design it has more touch and feel uh, conversation but it does take a toll on time i think so we have started optimizing time by doing that that's the positive side of it negative yeah, absolutely and, and that that is a true positive uh, which which has made all of us much more productive and you know if you would have just said that oh can i invest in technology and you know, get all of these bandwidths and uh, machines that can do all of this. Uh, I would say it's a no-brainer. This is what you should have done a long time back. 
if now the clients are going to accept that you don't have to travel, so you're saving a couple of hours there, that's productive time, right? Uh, so it's a no-brainer that, you know, that investment is offset by sheer non-travel. What this also has done is it's cut uh, our domestic and international travel. I don't think I'm going to see Deben at the airport uh, very soon. And, we, you know, we've bumped into each other at many occasions. Uh, yeah. more, more than I've bumped into him at meetings, I've seen him at the airport. That's changing. It, so we've, we've realized and uh, we did this analysis on how much we have not spent on flights. <laughs> That's a huge number. That just, you know, is, uh, is the amount of money that you need to spend on technology to get you up and going. It's, it's very interesting. I think what you're saying, you know, in the first two months of lockdown, I was, my revenue dropped. I'm sorry, I'm talking numbers now. My revenue dropped substantially, but I realized I didn't print anything. I saved in lakhs in just printing cost. Correct. Correct. I saved in lakhs in travel cost in these two months, which were already planned that, you know, on an average, we spent that much for printing. And so I think technology, if you just offset that, that money was well spent just to have, I could have bought a, a, a crore worth of technology this year. I will still save just because you know, the other things are going away because of that. I think that's it's definitely a, a positive on that. Channel. In my, in, you, you are a Delhi boy, and in, in 25 years of me being in Delhi, I've never seen a blue sky, which I've seen in the last six months. Yes. It's amazing. It's completely transformed, mm -hmm. and thanks to, you know, no transport moving and, you know, the First flights, time, uh, Delhi had better air quality than Bangalore ever in the lifetime probably. Okay. <laughs> ever. Ever. Not, not this decade or something. Ever. So Delhi saw better air quality than Bangalore. So my friends were teasing me that why you live in Bangalore? Why didn't you move back? So, you know, this is just short lived. Don't worry. In two months, we'll, we'll mess it up again. So I think so we have messed up Delhi already again, I think, a little bit on the uh, air quality front. Sorry, I think, I think we've been told to exit. Uh, thank you for having a chat with me. It was great. I think I wish we could do in person and then grab a drink after or at least a coffee after. I think that was would be great for all of us. I hope we'll do this in person someday, even if it's six feet away. I think, and then soon, I don't think it's too far away. Uh, I know you, you don't want to travel, I don't want to travel anymore so much, but I think things will open up and we'll see a positive light for the businesses all of our end. And I think uh, God bless us all. And I think we will do some great work together one day. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Rajay, for a wonderful moderation. Uh, okay. And thanks, Yatan, for you know giving insightful Gyan to all, and I'm sure the audiences would uh, audience would get benefited out of the the discussions we had today. Thanks, 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 everyone. Thanks, Ajay. Uh, thanks, Debin, for this opportunity, and thanks to Kohler for setting this up. Yes. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys soon.